What started as a purling village has undergone a complete economic transformation into one of the most ultra-modern cities of the world. Between the opulent skyline, buzzing markets, serene coastline, and massive desert, it's a place that bewilders the senses. Travelers, welcome to Doha Qatar! Let's start with some quick facts. More than 50 international airlines fly to Doha with Qatar Airways connecting over 160 destinations worldwide to the city. This is a desert, so expect temperatures to be hot. The best time to visit is between November and January. Attitude towards dress in Qatar is relaxed, but travelers are expected to show respect for local culture by avoiding revealing clothing. We recommend that both men and women ensure their shoulders and knees are covered. The currency is the Qatari Rial, which is currently valued at 3.64 to the dollar. Credit cards are widely accepted here, and we got by using card for almost everything. In terms of tipping, a service charge is included in the bill of most hospitality services. However, a tip of 10 to 15% to show your satisfaction is also appreciated. Qatar is a melting pot of culture with many languages being spoken. The official language is Arabic, but English is commonly spoken. Our first stop on our discovery of Doha took us to the National Museum of Qatar to learn a little bit about the history. The building itself is stunning and was made to represent naturally occurring crystal formation known as the Desert Rose. The National Museum of Qatar is home to tons of ancient objects, manuscripts, photographs, jewelry and customs. These objects bring to life the story not only of Qatar but also the region. Qatar, one of the wealthiest countries in the world, benefits most from the oil and natural gas industry, but one thing we quickly learned in this museum was the importance of pearl hunting on Qatar's history. For a long time, it was the backbone of this country until Japan replaced its dominance in a cheaper way. Still today, it is used by Qatar to represent the nation's identity. And the good news is that to get to our next spot, there's actually a free shuttle in front of the National Museum of Qatar. Just look for the pink sign. You're on your way. My brother Eric really recommend me this place whenever he was here working on cruise ships as well. So I really wanted to come over here and now it's my opportunity. I'm very excited to be in this place. This is the Museum of Islamic Arts and he told me it's beautiful, beautiful indeed. This museum represents intricate Islamic art from three continents over 1,400 years. It has some of the most comprehensive collections of metalwork, ceramics, jewelry, and textiles from around the world. And from here, you'll start to get a peek of the massive skyline of Doha, which we are going to dive deeper into next. Eric, you were right, this is amazing. Obviously, pearls are a huge part of the history of Doha. And what may surprise you is there's actually a neighborhood called the Pearl that pays homage to this industry. It's a super modern neighborhood. You can walk around tons of restaurants, great place to just centralize yourself for a little afternoon of strolling around. We're gonna take a look around, but let me tell you one thing. I'm surprised by how gorgeous it is. These canals, the architecture, the building, all definitely surprised me, and I'm loving this spot of Doha. Pearl is a man-made island that has those luxury yachts and extravagant residences that you probably imagine when you think of a place like Doha. It's even nicknamed Arabian Riviera for its colorful building and canals. This is a super gorgeous area to walk around. Definitely somewhere you'd want to go maybe as the sun is setting or even coming up if you can wake up early enough. It's actually very occidental, which surprised me, but Martin told me that actually 90% of the people who live in this neighborhood are foreigners, so it kind of makes sense. Flor de Mayo. In Mexico, we call it uh, Flor de Mayo. It's May flower on November. Actually, this is one of the things I like about this neighborhood is how green and lush it is, which is so ironic considering we're in a desert. But I love that juxtaposition. This city just kind of blows your mind in that way. Extremely modern, also a desert. You're next to the ocean. 
There's tons of greenery. What do you need place? In this area, there's tons of international food, but we really wanted to show you guys some traditional dishes. So we're at a place called Karaki. We've got great things about it. There's a few locations all around the city. We're gonna try some of their tea called Karak, as well as a few little sweets. The menu is amazing, and I can't wait to try it. First thing to try is chapati, which is a flatbread that can be eaten plain or rolled around in a choice of savory or sweet fillings. Then there is lukima, which are sweet flour dumplings that they are similar to donut holes. They can be covered in syrup or stuffed with a filling. And lastly, karak, which is a popular mixture of black tea, milk, sugar, and cardamom, and sometimes saffron and ginger. So this one is filled up with uh, cheese and honey. This is like a flour tortilla. <laughs> That's how it tasted for me. But with a very, very good cheese and honey. It tastes very good. It's like a crepe. Good. It's very good. I'm really excited to try this tea. Looks delicious. Mmm. This is so, so good. Oh my god. This is delicious. Okay, we got our Lukimut. This place has a ton of different variations. When we were in Dubai, we just tried the regular ones with honey. But they actually have pistachio here, Nutella, and the one that we got, Snickers. It sounds so good. Oh my god, so good. One thing we have to say is that the locals of Qatar are some of the most sweet people. They are so welcoming. They're always like so friendly and they want to know where are you from and what's your name and they're I don't know, they're, they're so, so... And they're so excited to show you the country. So the reason we're saying this is because we're just over at, um, you know, Karaki eating some of our lukimat. And the guy across was like, you guys, you need to try it with cheese and honey because that's how you eat it. So he yeah, that's a traditional way. So he ordered some to our table. And then he invited us to his house to try traditional food. He was so, so sweet. Fahad, thank you. Thank you, it was so nice to meet you. And uh, God. There's nothing greater than being in a place where you feel totally welcome. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Getting from place to place in Doha is easy. Their state-of-the-art metro connects visitors with practically any major attraction in the city. We were so impressed with how often trains arrived and how pristine they were inside. Right now we're in Education City. It's a big, huge complex that has some of the most prestigious universities around the world. Also right now they construct at a stadium in this complex and also there's the National Library of Qatar. It's supposed to be one of the most impressive libraries all around the world. So we came over here to see what we find. Natural light floods the open area and bookcases seemingly rise out of the floor and blend into the architecture. This library provides access to millions of books and tools that foster innovation such as 3D printing and music studios. We mentioned that this district houses some of the most prestigious campuses in the world such as Georgetown, Northwestern, Texas A&M, and Cornell. Oh my god, routine. We're gonna be millionaires. We gotta get this book. See that. This is a very centric and beautiful place. This is so quacky. And we're trying to find something to eat over here. As you can see, it's very busy, but I think we're gonna be lucky. This was our favorite spot to visit because we felt like we got to peek into Qatar's past. This place is buzzing during the day or night, and we enjoy getting lost in the many alleyways here. Souk means market, so you can imagine you can get a lot of shopping done here, and you can also find this huge thumb statue. I have to give this place not just one thumbs up, not just two, but three. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of different food options from around the world here. 
teriyaki food, Moroccan food, lots of Lebanese food. We ended up picking this place that has Egyptian food called Leali al -Kira. We really wanted to show you guys some traditional Qatari food, but at this time of day, it's 11 a.m., a lot of the places weren't open. Uh, I heard, though, that it is best to come back here during the evenings on Thursday and Friday for the street market. Unfortunately, we have games during that time, so we can't show you it, but highly recommend stopping by. When you're in the Middle East, you have to try camel. I order a camel kofta. So let's see again. Is it tender? Is it like what's it similar to? It's tender. It's a little bit like beef or lamb. Oh, okay. Right now we're in the Corniche. So this one is fully walkable. Right now it's closed because of the World Cup. But normally this is a very busy street that connects the port of Doha with the main city. It's beautiful, beautiful indeed. If you have the opportunity, you should walk this way. Perfect place to end out this video because we have this awesome view of the skyline. You get to see these gorgeous boats. And uh, gosh, I love this city. Totally surprised me in a million ways and we hope you guys enjoyed coming along. We make videos all around the USA and Mexico. Plus, we cover a lot of the World Cup, so check the videos if you're interested. So long. Travel well. Make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Curious what camera gear we use while traveling? Want to rock some of our awesome merch? Or maybe you just want a discount with some of our favorite companies? Make sure to check out the description of this video for links to all these things and more.